Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending June 1st. First up, this is a device that only goes by the name of B, and this is an invention by Vitold Melnicek, and I hope I'm not totally destroying this name. If you remember, I do a lot of reports on quadcopters, and there was a report on the past that I did on a quadcopter that was enclosed in a cage type of device where you could land the quadcopter, and the cage would actually become sort of like a rolling wheel to where this quadcopter could kind of function as a car. Well, this guy's come from the opposite direction, and he's built a car with rim drive wheels so that the center part of the wheel is open, and in, in those center parts is installed propellers so that this car actually functions as a car and a quadcopter in that type of a design. This is a Kickstarter project, so it's something that it may or may not come into fruition, but it looks like his is far enough along, and he's got a working prototype that he demonstrates. If you're willing to invest about $500 and this thing goes through, you will actually get a fully assembled working one of these devices. So that might be something kind of cool to try. All the links to everything will be posted down below in the description box. This next one comes up comes from Gamer Glow. This is another one about a quadcopter, but this is an unusual use. NASA on their website actually has this Mighty Eagle uh, robotic type of lander vehicle and they film the tests of this vehicle using a quadcopter. So even NASA is using these little quadcopters. I mean these these flying platforms just using them as type of a video recording device is just fantastic and it's nice to see that NASA has actually got on board with that. So um, this was sent in by Gamer Glow. Thank you for sending this article in for me. And next up do you ever wonder if you're a Fios customer and they say you have unlimited bandwidth, does it really actually mean unlimited? When does it get to the point to where they might actually contact you? Well, this one Fios customer in California has decided that, uh, or he discovered that the limits of Fios for him is around 77 terabytes of data a month. He got a call from the Verizon representative. Now, the funny thing about this is they were not so concerned about his bandwidth usage as to how he was using it. He was using it kind of like more in a business fashion. Well, let me just read this little part from the article here, and I'll try to pronounce this name. This is the username he goes by. He didn't want to give his real name out for the article here, but it's Hukonochi, something like that, has provided friends and family with a personal VPN, video streaming, and peer-to-peer -peer file service running a rack of seven servers with 209 terabytes of raw storage in his house. Well, naturally, uh, someone from Verizon eventually caught on to this because he's like the biggest user of bandwidth on the Fios network in all of California and talk to him about it. They're actually, I would have to give credit for this, that Verizon is being kind of reasonable. What he was doing was he was using residential service bandwidth as if it was business bandwidth and what they did instead of just smack down on him and just cutting him off and everything like that, they just asked him by July to please switch to business service for what he's doing since he's basically almost providing something like a tier two service to all of his friends and family and who knows el uh, who knows who all else with uh, a picture you'll you'll see in the thing here. I'm going to show you the picture of his rack of servers and things like that. I mean, basically, he's providing probably the bandwidth of a small town. So asking you to pay, uh, I think it's something like about double what he's paying for residential service to be a business customer. If you're going to provide that kind of service, you know, it's kind of reasonable to be asked to pay for it. And uh, I give Verizon kudos on this. They're not just doing the the kind of smackdown thing where they just cut him off and ban him and stuff like that. They're just asking him to buy a reasonable level of service. You're, you're going to end up being their competitor anyway when you're doing something like that. He's actually competitive, competing with some of their own services. So, you know, pay a little extra and go business class if that's what you're going to do. Next up, this is a company called Diamandis. And uh, what they're going to do is, this is another Kickstarter project too, which is kind of cool, is they're going to attempt... If they raise a million dollars, this is a Kickstarter program too, if they can raise a million dollars, they're going to attempt to put an open source space telescope where you can actually, by buying different levels of service, you can actually buy some time on the telescope yourself. So if this thing is launched and you you are a, you know one of the major supporters and contribute, uh, they have different levels of how much telescope time you get and stuff like that, but if this thing actually does take place this is kind of cool and and the, the thing that makes me even though they're asking a million dollars which the typical kickstarter project i think maxes out at about hundred thousand the reason why i think this actually has a chance to succeed if you look at the people in this video that are promoting it and i'll have the link to the video down below seth green richard branson bill nye the science guy i mean if these people are actually the ones that are promoting this to happen i think this stands a very good even even at the million dollar level this stands a very good chance of taking place but in case for some reason 
you want to actually operate a telescope now, I'll talk to you in a minute about there's the SLU telescope. And they used to, back when I got involved with it, they had a one-month free trial, but this was quite a few years ago. I don't know what now the programs are with it. You would have to actually go to the SLU website. But I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, the... Um, the, the space.com, let me, let me talk about this first. Space.com uh, had promoted the fact that they were going to show in the, that NASA was going to actually show a broadcast of the QE2. That's the meteor that just came by close to Earth. Uh, not super close, about 15 times the distance of the moon, but still close enough they could get some good pictures of it. Well, space.com kind of disappointed me because they promoted the fact that NASA TV was going to show us the close flyby didn't end up happening. I got a bunch of my friends on Facebook to uh, log on to the site space.com and look at the NASA streaming. All they basically did was kept streaming a kid's science show and never broke away from it. Finally, at the very last minute, or actually one minute past, when the QE2 asteroid was at its closest approach, then space.com got on the ball and switched over to the SLU telescope site because besides being uh, a telescope that you can actually use yourself. The SLU telescope schedules events and important astronom astronomical events are broadcast and streamed live. And I'll give you the link so you can actually see the rebroadcast of this. It's about a one minute and uh, one hour and twelve minute video that they have where and I was actually watching it live and what I did was I went on Facebook and I told my friends forget the space.com site they're dropping the ball just go right to the SLU telescope site and they're broadcasting it real time and it was kind of neat if you're if you're into astronomical stuff uh, you, it's nice now with the, the recorded video you can skip around because there's a lot of stuff where it's just uh, slow scan because what they have to do is they have to actually track the asteroid and they have to bring in enough light into the cameras from the telescope to actually give you a decent image so basically it's more like slow scan TV but then a few times during the video they play it back uh, where you can actually see the asteroid moving against the background of stars it's just a matter of tracking and if you want more information it'll actually tell you as you watch the video but anyway the thing about SLU is you can go to their website and it's events.slu.com and sign up for a membership yourself and at different levels you can schedule different things you obviously can't do it when they're running a special event like this but there are other times and for the prices and the scheduling you can actually buy into membership this telescope is a ground telescope in the Canary Islands and like I said I tried it out before I tried the one month uh, free thing unfortunately the time that I picked to do the one month free thing was some of the worst weather they had in the Canary Islands so I got um, little or nothing out of it myself but it's just a matter of you know the luck of the weather and when you choose the right season to do it but if you get a chance check out SLU telescopes the the uh, SLU space uh, not space the SLU ground telescope that you can actually buy time in right now and actually use it um, a couple of quick announcements here download helper has actually gotten their um, bug fix and the update and I got that myself I think two days ago on Firefox so when I opened my Firefox I noticed there was it uh, flipped to the tab for the download helper and the bug fix was listed as the YouTube problem with not being able to comment so obviously they did get on the ball with that I still think it wasn't download helper that was broken I think it was something to do either with flash or YouTube but you know what they aren't gonna fix it for us because they don't want you downloading videos so thank you download helper for at least working on it and getting that bug fixed and it seems like with my Firefox everything's working okay so you should be able to use if you're a fan of download helper you should be able to start using it now this is for my friend Navy Thomas 8. I got a little hint of a new device coming out from GoPro that might be useful for some of us moto vloggers, but useful also for a lot of other type of sports events and stuff like that. Um, I'll just I'll tell you nothing but just the fact that they've contacted Navy Thomas 8 and he may actually get something to try out before it comes to market. So keep checking out his channel and he said even if GoPro doesn't send it to him, he's going to buy this accessory himself, test it out and let us take a look at it and it's uh it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool accessory from GoPro. So check out Navy Thomas 8's channel. And last up, I want to do a promo too for uh, a person I'm subscribed to. This is Clash 230 and it's not a zero, it's an O. Clash 23 and then the small letter O. He just put up a a a video called in the news and I would like to just I hope it's not just a one-time event I would like to encourage more people to do weekly 
bi-weekly or monthly shows. I've been doing mine for seven years and I've seen a lot of shows where people have put on that have been pretty good, but they don't last really long. People get tired of doing it. And I know it can be a grind sometimes to do something. I've been doing the TDD report for seven years, but I would like to encourage if you run out of people say always, I'm running out of topics, I'm running out of idea. You know what? Put on a weekly show. Even if it's something similar to mine, if it's about science and tech and gadgets, let me know and I'll sure watch it and subscribe to it. But anything you're interested in, you know, motorcycle racing, uh, you know, just pick a subject that you happen to be interested in and give us weekly updates of things going on about it. You know, events, news, uh, new things people are developing, at, uh, and whatever subject that you're interested in. We need a lot more weekly shows from people coming out, I, I think. I mean, that's what I would really like. I would rather, instead of watching weekly TV shows, I would rather watch my friends do weekly or bi-weekly broadcasts. So just keep that in mind if you have a need for a topic or something. So that's all for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.